Now, here's a fine-looking coffee grinder. It comes in a proper hard-shell travel case and seems like it ought to cost more than it actually does. Is it as good as it looks or just good at looking better than it is? And how does it compare to its less expensive sibling, the JX Pro? Is this the same grinder with a few refinements or is it a step up? I'm going to put it to the test and evaluate it both in grind quality and in terms of flavor. Then I'll tear it down completely and we'll have a look at the component quality. I mean, at this price, they must have cut corners somewhere, right? There's only one way to find out. Oh my God. It's like a miracle. This is the Zpresso JE Plus. It's heavily built and it works well. I chose the JE Plus because it has a few features that I like. A magnetic attachment for the cup, a built-in dosing funnel, and a fitted hard shell case. But just remember as we look closer that it doesn't grind any better than the JX Pro and it costs almost $100 more. The adjustment ring is clicky but very precise. I found it possible to dial in several different espresso recipes without having to adjust the dose. The thread pitch is fine enough that lash is pretty much negligible. However, the marks are hard for me to see, so I used a pencil to highlight the zero and a black sharpie to darken the reference dot. The bearings feel smooth and they're nicely centered. The shaft spins with precision. You can hear the burrs rubbing as they just come together, and the sound indicates that they're concentric to about three or four microns. That's a guess, but an educated one. The top bearing mount traps beans when you fill the unit, but a single sharp knock takes care of that. It grinds smoothly enough. Conicals this size are going to grab from time to time, but you get enough leverage here that it's not a bother. The crank is long enough, although the wood for the handle is a bit cheap and kind of soft. It feels comfortable in the hand, though. Grinding for espresso at a comfortable pace gives me 25 grams per minute, or just over 2 seconds per gram. Coarser grinding goes a little faster. I'm not a huge fan of this plastic cover, but it's easy to remove and I've had no popcorn issues using it like this. I think it looks better, so I've kept it this way. The magnetic coupling is a real improvement over the typical threaded design. The grind cup can be configured with a plain flat bottom or with a dosing funnel. I don't think the funnel works terribly well. I've tried it with several different coffees and different grinds, but it's always been messy and I've had to use my fingers. However, the stepped design fits pretty much everything from 49mm to 58mm, including an AeroPress. Let's look at the grit quality. This is an espresso grind, not that you can see much detail, but showing it is expected, so here you go. A bit later, I'm going to show you how a shot looks, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Meanwhile, let's look at a pour-over grind, where we actually can see something. I'd call that a fairly typical size distribution for conical burrs. I compared it to my Eureka Specialita, which uses flat burrs and served as my reference grinder. Same coffee, same dose, and various grind adjustments on the JE Plus until I got my brew times to match. To achieve the three and a half minute brew that I've dialed in on the SPET, I have to grind coarser. That's because the JE Plus makes proportionally more fines, which load the paper and slow things down. So I increase the overall particle size to keep my brewing time where I want it. The flavor here is richer, but also less complex. The difference is subtle, but it's noticeable and repeatable. I prefer the pour over coffee that I get from the SPET, but that doesn't mean that you will. Now, those extra micro fines have a real effect on espresso. Here you can see what looks like a typical shot, only toward the end it's obvious how syrupy the coffee is. Look at the way the bubbles form and break. There's noticeably more solid content in the coffee, which gives it that rich mouthfeel and a rounder, more chocolatey flavor profile. It's really quite good. 
You can see it here again using the AeroPress with my method for espresso-like coffee. It's very concentrated and heavy. Check out my recent video if you want to know how to make your AeroPress do this. I was able to dial in the JE Plus for everything from Turkish to pour over, so it really is versatile, though clearly focused on espresso. As with any grinder, it becomes less precise and consistent as the grit size increases. More so than a good flat burr grinder, but that's the nature of the beast. This grinder is no slouch, especially with finer grit sizes. It delivers the sort of richness and round flavors that lots of people enjoy. All right, now let's do a full tear down and find out what she's made of. First, push firmly against the center burr from underneath to relieve the spring pressure and prevent it from turning. Now unscrew the adjustment ring. There are two detent balls on the frame here and corresponding dimples under the ring. Beneath the ring is an internally threaded washer with a detent ball. This washer influences the orientation of the adjustment ring and also holds the center shaft in place. You can see the corresponding dimples here on the top of a second washer on the bearing carrier. This bearing carrier has fine pitch external threads that engage the internal threads of the adjustment ring. Notice also that the bearing carrier has an orientation mark underneath. This mark lines up counterintuitively on the opposite side from the reference dot. Now that the center burr and shaft are free, carefully slide them out. You'll see a washer and a tensioning spring. Notice their orientation. The housing for the outer burr is left-hand threaded. Once that's removed, you can clean inside easily. There's no need to remove the lower bearing. A bit of brushing and a few squirts with the blower bulb should be enough. Here we have 47 mm stainless steel burrs with some kind of protective coating. They're nicely made and properly aligned, but for me, they're not ideal. I'd prefer high-speed steel, which costs less, but more importantly, takes a better edge than stainless. I would call this very well built, and I'd rate the component quality high. I wouldn't mind if the bearings themselves were a bit more substantial, and I'd prefer fewer threaded interfaces because, you know, we're only human and it's just a matter of time before momentary carelessness leads to some cross-threading. But this is remarkably well made, considering the price. Cleaning is a bit of a ritual. The supplied brush is soft on one end and extremely soft on the other, like a cosmetic brush. I like to use stiffer ones as well. Acid brushes are dirt cheap. I buy them by the gross because they have scores of uses around the house. As is, it's stiffer than the stiff end of the Zipresso brush. I take a second one and cut the bristles, thus about halfway, to make it stiffer still. Now you can clean the crevices easily. Incidentally, acid brush handles come in handy for making a long distribution tool for the abnormally deep robot basket, or a pulverizer of lumps for my Turkish coffee pot. A little hot glue and one of those micro whisks and you're laughing. Once you've got everything clean, you can lubricate the shaft with a very fine coating of food grade grease like Molly Coat 111. It's enclosed in a sleeve, so it won't attract bits. However, all of the other wearing parts should be lubricated with a food-grade dry lubricant, which will work for the shaft too, so there's no need to buy more than one. Reassembly is easy if you've remembered to keep everything oriented correctly. Install the outer burr, remembering that its carrier is left-hand threaded. Place the spring and washer on the center burr shaft and carefully insert it in the sleeve. Press it from beneath as you replace the upper bearing carrier, recalling that the orientation mark indicates the opposite of what you would expect. The internally threaded washer will hold the shaft in place and it should be tightened all the way to begin. If your grinder's zero point turns out not to be zero, you can loosen the washer one or two clicks. Finally, screw on the adjustment ring and check that the setting where you can hear the burrs just begin to touch lines up on zero. 
It's not crucial, but it makes it easier to recall your settings. So what if you're already using an XJ Pro? Should you upgrade? Oh God, no. The magnetic coupling and fitted travel case are good features. The dosing cup is a nice idea, if not the greatest actual thing. And the burrs are oriented toward the mellow, rich end of the flavor spectrum. But seriously, your grinder is just as good. However, if you're trying to decide between the two, well, if your budget is tight, I can recommend the JX Pro without reservation. There is not a single electric grinder in that price range that can touch it in terms of grind quality or build quality for that matter. I found the features here worth some extra money, only less so now that I see one of them isn't really up to scratch. I'd be more enthusiastic if the dosing cup worked better because along with the magnetic coupling, it would smooth out the workflow noticeably. That combination drew me to this model initially. Having to poke around in there with my fingers is a disappointment. And the smaller bottom surface makes the unit likely to tip, whereas the square plain bottom doesn't. So yeah, I think the dosing cup needs further development. To me, it would be worth every cent of the price difference if it had worked as I'd hoped. If you don't mind this much disassembly and reassembly merely to clean it, you can have a fine little grinder at a price that's hard to match. As with the JX Pro, there is no electric grinder in the same price range that approaches this level of quality, accuracy, and reliability. So if a $500 or $600 electric grinder is outside your budget, the Z-Press OJ series, like the Orphan Lido series, is about as good as it gets in the $150 to $250 range. The Commandante C40, to me, is a little pricey for what you get, although it is a good piece of kit that I would consider. And the venerable Kinu M47 is very fine, although you can get a competent electric grinder for what it costs. When it comes to a budget-friendly but truly professional piece of manual kit, Zepresso and Orphan are at the top of my list. Well, that's about all for today. I'm not finished with the AeroPress just yet. I'm looking for a way to preserve the foam that's cheap, easy, and effective. I'm also going to look into a few other one-hand espresso gadgets that cost under $100 and compare them to it and to each other. I'm not sure when I'll have that video for you, but I'm on it. Also, have you ever wondered whether Hario products made in Japan are worth paying more for than their counterparts made in China? I know I have. Recently, I had an experience that gave me some insight into that, which I'll share with you next time. So keep in touch. Cheers.